Well, good morning, everyone. If you're not already aware, today is Mother's Day. If you haven't hugged your mom yet today, go do that right now. And while you're at it, grab your Bible. You've got 30 seconds. All right, I pray for each one of you today that you recognize the nurturing love that moms, grandmas, and mom-like figures provide for us each and every day. So thank you, moms. Mother's Day isn't a holiday that we see celebrated in the Bible, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't. In fact, we should be celebrating our moms and their godly efforts every single day, not just once a year. What we do see in the Bible are several examples of godly mothers and the lessons that we can learn from them. The first mother we'll learn about today is Hannah. You can read about Hannah's story in the book of 1 Samuel. Hannah was a young lady who desperately wanted to have children, but couldn't. She wanted kids so bad that she spent so much time in prayer that people thought she was drunk. She prayed, O oh God of the angel armies, if you'll take a good hard look at my pain, if you'll quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely, unreservedly to you. I'll set him apart for a life of holy discipline. Hannah prayed this prayer with a promise to God that if he were to give her a son, that she would give him back to the Lord for his service. Hannah wanted a son for herself, but she also knew the responsibility that would be given to her, and she wasn't selfish in her request. Samuel would eventually grow up to be a godly man who would anoint the first two kings of Israel. So what can we learn from Hannah? To never stop praying for what God would have for us. Today, we celebrate the moms who give of themselves on our behalf. For the moms who know what's best and encourage us to follow God. The next mom we're learning about today is Samson's mother, also called the wife of Manoah. You can read about her story in the book of Judges chapter 13. We don't know her name, but the book of Judges says that the wife of Manoah, like Hannah, couldn't have children. But an angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, I know that you are barren and childless, but you're going to become pregnant and bear a son. But take much care. Drink no wine. Eat nothing ritually unclean. You are, in fact, pregnant right now, carrying a son. No razor will touch his head. The boy will be God's Nazarite from the moment of his birth. Even though suddenly being visited by an angel of the Lord was likely frightening, Samson's mother knew something special was about to happen. When Manoah became afraid that they'd die for seeing the face of God, his wife reassured him that God would not harm them and that he had a special plan for them. Manoah's wife did exactly as the Lord commanded her, and she soon gave birth to Samson, who the Lord would later use to defeat the Philistines. So what can we learn from Manoah's wife? To trust in the Lord and his plans for us, even when they seem a bit unusual. Yeah, I think I'll cut my hair. No, Samson. Today, we celebrate those moms who trust in God's plan for our lives and those moms who bring peace into scary situations. The last mom we're learning about today is Bathsheba. You might remember her from the story of David and Bathsheba in 2 Samuel chapter 11. One night in Jerusalem, David was walking on his rooftop when he spotted a beautiful woman bathing nearby. Even though David knew she was already married, he still invited her to his palace where they slept together. Soon after, they found out that Bathsheba was pregnant, and David attempted to hide his sin by having Uriah murdered in battle. The Lord brought his wrath and judgment upon them, allowing their infant son to die. David later repented of his sin and married Bathsheba. They had another child together, Solomon, who would later become king and a writer. And this is where the story gets interesting. Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. The words of King Lemuel. 
the strong advice his mother gave him. Most Bible scholars agree that King Lemuel is actually a nickname for King Solomon. That means the godly woman and mother we read about in Proverbs 31 is actually Bathsheba. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband treats her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work. She rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. So what can we learn from Bathsheba? Even those guilty of adultery are redeemable and can be used as shining stars for other people. Today, we celebrate all moms and pray a blessing over them. Lord God, thank you so much for the godly women in our lives. Those who are moms, grandmothers, and mom-like figures. God, we pray for their wisdom. God, that they would seek you above anything else. God, thank you so much for placing them in our lives. In Christ's name, amen. If you haven't heard, next Saturday and Sunday is UDC Serve Day, and we want all of the kids to get involved. We want to be like Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve others. If you're not sure what to do, ask a parent. Or you can watch this short video to get some ideas. Help dust the furniture. Grab a broom and a dustpan and do some sweeping. Help do the dishes. Go outside and pick up trash. All right, that's it. Make sure you have someone take pictures of you serving so that we can share them. Until next time, take care.